Hello everybody and welcome back. This is our second exercise now, um, working with the t-distribution. So once again, single population mean, we're still doing a one tail test, sigma is unknown. I wanna just point out, just so there's no confusion, I don't wanna mislead anybody, normally on a, an assignment, on an exam, something like this, at least in my class, you wouldn't have this information here. You would need to be able to read the problem and recognize what kind of problem it is and recognize whether you're working with the population standard deviation or the, the sample standard deviation. You would need to be able to recognize if it's one population or more. At this point in, in this uh, series of videos, we haven't looked at more yet, so that's straightforward. And you would have to recognize if it's a one-tail or two-tail test. So let's go through this problem and, and we'll just kind of point out within this problem, how can we identify these details, which normally wouldn't be given to us. So efficiency in a manufacturing process is crucial for the profit, profitability of the firms in a competitive market. Currently, one part of the process is requiring 2.3 minutes or 138 seconds to complete. In an effort to improve efficiency, a number of employees have developed a new approach, which they believe will reduce the amount of time required to less than 2.1 minutes or 126 seconds. After making some adjustments and uh, an operator in a new system, they collect a sample of production times for 41 units, we have a sample mean of 122 seconds with a standard deviation of 41.4. We're gonna test that 5% whether the, the new method achieved its objective. Looks like I've got a typo right in here I'm gonna to have to fix. So whether this new manufacturing process achieved its objective. Okay, so what are our clues here? Part A is to formulate the test. So are we doing a Z test or a T test? The biggest identifier of whether or not you're doing a T test or a Z test is whether or not you have the population standard deviation. And you would know that by actually seeing the word population or the symbol that represents population, which is sigma, right? Either sigma or sigma squared or the word population. If you don't see any of those, you're working with sample data. It's really as straightforward as that. And so when I go through this, this problem, I don't see any of those three words. So that to me, okay, I must be working with the t-distribution. And also, just to reinforce that, well, here it's describing my sample, right? I've taken a sample of 41 units. Here's its mean. Here's its standard deviation. I'm describing my sample. So I have a sample standard deviation. Good. So that, that I can see, okay, this is a T distribution I need to be working with. Now, what kind of test is it? Upper tail, lower tail, or two tail test? Well, what is it we're trying to do? What was the objective of, of this exercise? Here we have this process that currently takes 138, 138 seconds. We're trying to improve efficiency. We've developed a new approach which they believe will reduce the amount of time to less than 126 seconds. So, there's the clue less than. I'm trying to see if I have evidence to show that my average is less than some value. And so there's the key word to tell me that the test that we're doing here is to see whether the mean is less than some amount. Now I'm leaving the hypothesized value open for now because that's actually a little bit of a trick in this question too. It, there's some information in here that can be a little bit misleading because here it's giving me one value. Currently, it's 138 seconds. But what is it they're trying to achieve? Well, they've 
they've developed this new system that they believe will reduce the amount of time, not necessarily just reduce the amount of time, but reduce it to less than 120, uh, 126 seconds. So this is actually my hypothesized value, at least for this test. There's another test that's coming. So this is our first test. Did they succeed at reducing the amount of time to something less than 26 seconds? My alternative says, yes, they did succeed. My null says, no, they did not succeed. Next step, well, here I have my level of significance is given to us. Now we want to calculate that test statistic using what is a fairly familiar calculation. So here my point estimate, my sample is 123 minus 126. I have my standard deviation is 41.4 over the square root of, there's my sample size, 41. So my T is, let's see, 41.4 over root 41. And I have a T statistic of 0.464. Good. What's next? p-value approach. We can use a critical value approach too. Why not? What's our degrees of freedom? I have 41 um, units in my sample, degrees of freedom, n minus 1. I have 40 degrees of freedom. So I'm just going to scroll down to my t distribution and I'm looking for that distribution with 40 degrees of freedom. And so I keep oh, I'll go down a little bit further, further, further. And here I see 40 degrees of freedom. So again, I can ignore everything on this table except that one row of critical values that corresponds with my specific variant of the distribution that's relevant for this problem and those upper tail probabilities. Now notice these are upper tail probabilities and we're doing a lower tail test. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind when we are getting our p-values. So my test statistic is 0.464. I go to my t-tables. I see, okay, at 40 degrees of freedom, that test statistic is smaller than the smallest value on the table for that variant of the t distribution. So what that means, if I follow this one up all the way to the top, well that gives me a probability of 0.25 and that's the smallest value which is 0.681. So if my t distribution looks something like this and these are upper tail values so there's point, well no it's not going to be there 0.681 is going to be over here somewhere. And that gives me a value in the upper tail of 0.25. Well, my test statistic here probably actually should have been a negative. 123 minus 26. Yeah, that should have been a negative. But if I just because I'm working with a table that gives me upper tail probabilities, I know it's a symmetric distribution. And so if I have 0.25 in the upper tail of 0.681, well then I also have 0.25 in the lower tail of that distribution to the left of 0.681. Now, my test statistic was negative 0.46, so my test statistic is somewhere in here, negative 0.46. My p-value, well, it's going to be not just this area, but all of this area here. So if the red shaded area 
and the lower tail. I'm not going to worry about this because I'm doing a lower tail test. If the red shaded area is 0.25, well then my purple area is going to be something greater than 0.25. And so that's my p-value for this lower tail test. It's going to be something larger than 0.25. Now before we jump ahead and, and draw our conclusion, we might as well get our critical value here as well. I've got a level of significance of 5%. So I want the T for 0 0.05, 40 degrees of freedom. And I come down here, there's 0.05. And I'm coming down, 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 1.684. Again, yes, these are upper tail probabilities. So this means that I have some value 1.684 here. That gives me an area of 0.05 in the upper tail. But once more, this distribution is perfectly symmetric, which means that down here at negative 1.684, well, that gives me an area here equal to my level of significance, 0.05. Okay, so my tested, uh, my critical value, negative 1.684. And again, I'm going to reject if my test statistic is smaller. And I will not reject if my test statistic is larger. Exactly the same uh, rejection rules that we've worked with when we are looking at the Z distribution. So, based on both of these approaches, the p-value approach, the critical value approach, both of them support our inability to reject. We are unable to say that this new manufacturing process succeeded at reducing the time required to under 20, uh, 126 seconds. So our evidence here shows that they failed to reduce the time to less than 126 seconds. That was, that was their goal that was given here. Did they succeed at reducing the time relative to the previous standard? Previous standard being 138 seconds. Well, this process is entirely the same. The only difference here is our hypothesized value has changed. So to, to keep this kind of in the context of what we're talking about, right, we, we have evidence to show that they failed to succeed at reducing below that goal. They had this goal of 126 seconds. We can't support um, a claim that they've succeeded. So our evidence here supports the null hypothesis on that one. But did they succeed at reducing it at least below the previous standard. Alternative hypothesis says yes. Null hypothesis says no. You, you didn't even succeed at reducing it at all. Whereas the alternative hypothesis is saying, well, at least you succeeded at reducing it below the previous standard. Maybe you didn't hit your goal of less than 126, but it's hopefully better than the standard. We can do this at the same level of significance. The next step is that T statistic, 123 minus, now it's the, the previous standard of 138, divided by 41.4 over root 41. That gives me, let's see, Two point negative two point three two. Once again, I'm going to go down to my t tables, and our sample size hasn't changed. Nothing about the sample has changed, so we're still using exactly the same variant of that t distribution. We still have forty degrees of freedom. I'm looking for my uh, test statistic two point three two. 
going to lie between these values. I'm ignoring the negative, again, because this distribution is perfectly symmetric. So I know the probability that I want, yeah, it's in the lower tail. This is giving me upper tail probabilities, but the distribution is symmetric. So I can just look at my positive, the positive of my test statistic. And I can see that it lies between these two values. I follow these up. And there's my relevant probabilities between 0.02 and 0.1. So for this one, let's scribble it down over here. My p-value is less than 0.02, greater than 0.01. Our critical value here hasn't changed, but of course now my test statistic sure has. Now it's down here. Here I can see it's in that reject space. Here I can see the p-value. If it's less than 0.02, well, you bet it's going to be less than 0.05. Everything here points to a reject. So here we do have evidence to show that they succeeded at least at reducing the average time of this manufacturing process, not below their goal but at least it's faster than the previous standard. Okay, so that's it. That's two tests in, in, in one video. Hopefully it all made sense and, and was helpful. Thank you all for watching, guys. We'll come back and do some more in just a bit. Bye-bye.